Hey, Life Group Leaders and Alpha Table Leaders, I want to tell you a little bit about discipling new believers. Uh, this is a big deal because we've had about 80-some people saved since January at Church of the Open Door. Praise God. That's amazing. It's huge. It's exciting. It's really a big part of how we celebrate doing the job and fulfilling the Great Commission at Church of the Open Door. But I also know that the Great Commission, as Jesus speaks it, is about making disciples, not merely getting people saved. So what I want to do today is talk to you a little bit about discipling new believers because we're seeing an influx of them into life groups. And so I've got a little way to remember it. We're going to talk about the ABCs of discipling new believers. Um, one of the first things you want to do is make sure that they announce, the spelling is bad, announce their salvation. We found out that there is a, an effect that when somebody becomes a believer, they immediately start hanging around with other Christians for good reason. We want to disciple them. We want to invest in them. We want them to lead their old life. Uh, the only negative of that is they lose their relationships with their non-believing friends. So capitalize on it while they still have those relationships and get them to announce to their non-believing friends what happened. The sooner they do that, the better. Um, their friends are going to see the change. And if they can know why that change came, they start getting interested. And they have a wonderful and amazing evangelism opportunity. It's a very narrow window when they first get saved. So encourage somebody that you know that's put their faith in Christ. Encourage them to announce it to their friends. Bring their friends because they have a wonderful opportunity to evangelize. By the way, most of the evangelism we're seeing in our church is through new believers. It's an exciting thing. The next thing is baptism. Um, Man, I'm a terrible speller and writer on dry erase boards. Um, Jesus says to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's part of the Great Commission when he's talking it out, when he's spelling it out. Encourage them to get baptized sooner rather than later. Jim talked about this at the big bab baptismal service that we had at a night of worship a while back. And he was talking about how the New Testament knew nothing of un unbaptized believers. It used to be you got saved, you went out there and you got baptized right there in the Jordan River and whatever body water was nearby. There was no like waiting around or anything. You don't, in baptism, it's a proclamation of faith. Somebody doesn't have to get holy before they get baptized. There's nothing to wait for. Encourage them to get baptized. By the way, out of that normally comes some assurance. What I'm finding is kind of walking through the paces of the baptism prep. We um, help them put together their testimony. We go over how we do baptisms. We make sure that they've covered all the bases and they know the decision they've made. Assurance stuff kind of comes out of that. It's a really big thing. So baptism is valuable not just for the church and celebrating it, but it's also for God's glory and it's for their assurance of their salvation. It helps them get grounded. The other thing, and I hope this is obviously obvious to you, is um, core Christ-like characteristics. Um, hmm. When we talk about becoming like Christ, when we talk about fulfilling our mission at Church of the Open Door, we always talk about leading people in the adventure of becoming like Christ. So when we think about that, many of you know, hopefully you've paid attention in all of our trainings and things like that, we have what we call our core Christ-like characteristics. There's connected to God, through the word and prayer, heart of worship, relates with others, centered love, intentional evangelism, spirit-led servant, and trustworthy steward of God's resources. What I would encourage you to do is you've got some of these new believers in your group. Think about the fact that they don't know how to connect to God through the word and prayer. Talk to them about prayer. Encourage them to say, hey, you know, prayer is just talking to God. So just talk to Him. You don't have to have any special memorization. Um, you don't have to know anything else like that. Just, just talk to them. Um, and you can take them through things that you might have learned. Whatever you do, talk to them about the very basics of prayer. Talk to them about, you know, confession. Talk to them about asking for God's help. Talk to them about meditating in Him. Talk to them just simply about talking to God. Um, talk to them about reading the Word of God. Encourage them where to go first. Uh, I like to send people to the book of John. It's a great way to just kind of get um, to get to jump in, or even the book of Acts. A lot of things in the New Testament. Encourage. I generally encourage New Testament before Old Testament, but help them know how to read. Help them not to feel like they have to do a certain amount. Say, you know what, maybe you start with a verse and you read a little bit more. Maybe you read a verse from Proverbs or a chapter from Proverbs. Whatever you do, give them some coaching. Um, encourage them to come to Loving God 101. Encourage them to maybe come to Alpha. We're going to talk about this more. But help them through. Ask them questions. Ask them to ask you questions. Work through that. Um, develop their heart of worship. Talk to them about God's glory. Relating with others centered love. We can get into the other stuff first, but if you would focus on helping them connect to God through the word and prayer in those early days. It's huge. Um, get them a Bible. Make it something that's easy to read. Do whatever you need to. But um, just a quick review. Um, when you have a new believer in your life group, 
Make sure that they've announced to their non-believing friends and to their believing friends what God has done in them because they have a wonderful, narrow window of evangelism. Encourage them to get baptized for God's glory, for the encouragement of the church, and for their own assurance. And then also work on the core Christ-like characteristics, especially connected to God through the word and prayer. It's going to be awesome. I am so excited to see these people becoming like Christ. So excited about the evangelism you're doing. Have a great summer and keep up the good work.